Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought my own original challenge and not just the original challenge, I have also brought my own original uh, derivation or you can say technique uh, th that will give you some deep insight into magnetic force and how it is related to electric force. So without much ado, let me straight away get into my challenge, let's see. So here is the challenge. Magnetic force between semi cylindrical shell and an infinite plane. So, what's the problem here? A long, uniformly charged, thin semi cylindrical shell having charge density sigma and radius capital R has a long strip serving as a cover for the base as shown in the figure. So, this has got some charge density sigma and it has got some radius capital R and there is cover. So, you can see this yellow thing is supposed to be the base cover of the semi cylinder. Okay. The strip also has a uniform surface charge density sigma. So, this one also has got a charge density sigma and this also has a charge density sigma and this length is supposed to be pretty long okay if now the entire arrangement is moved in space with a non-relativistic velocity v parallel to the axis of the cylinder find the force of magnetic interaction between the cover and the semi cylinder so we are moving the whole thing uh, with non-relativistic speed v parallel to the axis of cylinder and also the cover is moving along with the cylinder and we want to find out the magnetic force of interaction between the two okay so if you want you can give it a try uh, i'll get into my analysis right away and before i analyze this problem uh, i'll also analyze one electrostatic problem from uh, pathfinder because it turns out that this problem is very closely related to the electrostatics problem and i'll also present that problem uh, straight away here so that uh, uh, i mean we can relate the two problems so the question is very closely related to the following problem from pathfinder electrostatics so we'll first solve that problem and then apply our learning here so what's the other problem from Pathfinder from which this problem is inspired? This is the problem. So let me read this one also. A half cylinder of radius capital R and, as, and length capital L much much greater than R is formed by cutting cylindrical pipe made of an insulating material along a plane containing its axis. So similar geometry. Uh, here there, there is some capital Q charge and here there is some small Q charge uh, on the cover. Similar geometry. I'll read out the language but uh, just I know this beforehand so I'm telling. Okay. The rectangular base of the half cylinder is closed by a dielectric plate of length capital L and width 2R. Charge capital Q on the half cylinder and a charge small q on the dielectric plate are uniformly sprinkled. Okay. Estimate the force of electrostatic interaction between the plates and half cylinder. So very similar geometry but here you have to find the electrostatic force and in my problem you have to find the magnetic force. And first I am going to solve this electrostatics problem and then I will relate the result of the electrostatics to the magnetics. So we will see how we can uh, navigate it that way. Okay, let's see. Okay, so <coughs> so the first concept here, in fact, I'm going to present several concepts uh, in this. So hold tight and watch the video all the way till end so that you do get all the concepts that I wanted to, uh, wanted to uh, that you uh, keep it with yourself uh, for JE and Olympiad. So uh, please uh, pay very careful attention. So here's the first concept is coming here relation between the normal force and flux on a uniformly charged lamina. So it turns out that if I know the flux through a lamina and I know uh, uh, the charge density, then I can simply find out the normal force on the lamina in terms of as a product of sigma and the flux. We'll see uh, what kind of result we get. Consider a small patch of lamina having area ds and charge density sigma. So here I have considered a lamina whose uh, area is ds and the charge density over here is sigma. Okay. And let's say there's some point charge Q over here. So we'll relate the flux and the normal component of force for this uh, small patch. Okay. So consider a small patch of lamina having area ds and charge density sigma. We shall relate the normal force on the patch due to a point charge with the flux through the patch. So if I have a point charge over here at a distance r from the uh, patch, what is the flux? So you know that uh, field over here is kq by r square. So that's the field and you then take normal is downward so ds cos theta you have to take so kq by r square into ds cos theta here k is 1 by 4 perhaps not i don't like to write the full expanded form so this is your flux okay what about the normal component of force so you know that uh, force between two uh, charges is kq1 q2 by r square and this is almost as good as a point charge okay so the normal component of force will be kq by r square into sigma ds uh, that's the total force and cos theta because I am interested in the normal component of force. So kq by r square sigma ds into cos theta. That's the normal component of the force. 
and if you see what things we are getting common so kq by r square ds cos theta kq by r square ds cos theta only sigma is extra here what you can see that the x the normal component of force is nothing but charge density times the flux isn't that a beautiful relation okay and uh, since I, I have written this for an element I can just integrate over the entire thing uh, I mean it's not that you have to solve a complicated integral and I can straight away write that small amount of normal force is sigma d phi so total force normal will be equal to sigma into flux please bear in mind this is for laminar objects for flat sheets because if it's not a laminar then in, in that case for small small patches the normals will also keep on bending and uh, then this won't work so it's it's applicable whenever you have laminar objects so uh, charge density into flux uh, will straight away give you the force okay and if suppose charge density is varying then of course you'll have to do an integration okay now let us apply this to the pathfinder electrostatics problem so let's say this length is l so what is the flux through the base if you see uh, if i consider this line strip element you can see that this line strip element subtends an angle 90 degree on the base so this line is uh, emitting the field lines in all 360 degree out of which uh, the field lines that are there in 90 degree they are passing through the base i am deliberately saying 360 degree and not 4 pi steradians why because from when you have a line charge kind of arrangement the field lines are uh, radially outward symmetric there is a cylindrical symmetry in 360 degree and not 4 pi steradians okay so it's not a sphere so therefore and it's very long so you can see that uh, the field lines that are contained in 90 degree they are passing through the base and other 270 degree they are going outward okay so what's the flux so total flux will be the one fourth of the, i mean the flux passing through the base will be one fourth of the total emitted flux from this strip so that's what i've written consider a strip of length capital l on the semi cylinder the subtends an angle 90 degree on the base of the semi cylinder which is one fourth of 360 degree so if therefore if x is the charge on the strip then the flux through the base is simply one fourth of x by epsilon naught i hope you got that Note that this strip is completely arbitrary. So I have taken just any uh, angular position. It's not any particular strip. So this relation holds for all such strips. Therefore, if capital Q is the total charge on the semi-cylinder, the flux through the base must be simply capital Q by 4 epsilon naught, right? So I know the flux. Now you just multiply it by the charge density of the base and you're done, okay? Now sigma for the base will be what? Q upon 2RL. Why? Because see, uh, this distance is 2R and the length is L. So the area of this rectangle is simply 2R into L and sm uh, charge is small q so small q upon 2RL is your sigma right that's what I have done so small q upon 2RL and now you just multiply phi by sigma and you get uh, this result okay qq upon 8 epsilon RL so this was uh, a pathfinder MCQ I think it's M MCQ 13 from electrostatics let me check here yes it is uh, pathfinder MCQ 13 so we have also solved here uh, pathfinder mcq 13 from electrostatics i hope you understood the solution and now that you have understood the solution to the electrostatics problem now we are going to extend this to the magnetics problem in my original way okay let's see how to do it uh, i'm sure uh, I, there are many qualified colleagues i have very capable colleagues who will be able to figure out many things on their own that are not there in textbooks nothing i mean but still i did it and feel good about uh, whatever i did okay so let me get into this uh, my original problem now so second concept that i wanted to introduce is relation between electric and magnetic fields due to charge rigid body in pure translation okay so let's say uh, i have a, some rigid body okay and it is in pure translation that means it doesn't have any omega it's only translating somewhere and let us say qi is some charge in this rigid body and uh, we are considering the field due to this at some point p which has got a position vector ri instantaneously okay so what's the magnetic field due to this qi according to biosavart law standard uh, result mu naught by 4 pi into qi times v cross ri upon ri q okay so now what I can do, I can multiply and divide this by epsilon naught. So what this does this become? So 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, you can write it as, uh, uh, this becomes your, I mean, 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times uh, Q Ri upon RQ becomes R square. So you can see this becomes uh, similar to electric field, right? You take QI over here. So QI Ri upon RI cube and 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, that becomes electric field. So magnetic field due to this point charge is simply mu naught epsilon naught times V cross electric field due to the ith particle okay this part is uh, there in uh, many textbooks and even study materials uh, my original part is coming later okay and mu naught epsilon naught of course you can write it as 1 by c square that's standard knowledge okay 
so so magnetic field due to the ith particle is v cross electric field due to the ith particle divided by c square because c is 1 by under root of mu naught epsilon naught okay <coughs> now if you take summation over all the particles we can say that if a rigid body is in pure translation the magnetic field due to the rigid body is simply v vector by c square cross electric field due to the same rigid body at any point so this is valid so long there is pure translation so i hope a result 4 is clear to all of you now one more concept my original concept okay uh, huh. or uh, rather i shouldn't call it a concept i'm not great like newton or something but uh, yes it's my derivation i thought it on my own so concept 3 uh, relation between electric force and magnetic force between two translating charged bodies charged rigid bodies so let's say this is some rigid body it's moving it's translating with the velocity vector v1 and there is another uh, rigid body let us say this is a rigid body 2 and it's translating with a uh, velocity vector v2 okay and let us say qj is the jth uh, particle in the second rigid body okay so what is the magnetic force on second particle so you know that lorentz force will be magnetic uh, force part of the lorentz force will be qv cross b right so that's also standard knowledge so magnetic force on jth particle is qj times v2 cross b on the jth particle b due to the first body on the jth particle where bj is the magnetic field due to the body 1 on the jth particle of the body 2 okay so uh, okay so now again uh, b of uh, b acting at j can be written in terms of electric field at point j by the formula that we just saw here we try to relate magnetic field by electric field with electric field so this can of course be written as instead of bj i can write as v1 cross ej divided by c square right using the equation 4 that i had just shown you okay and now uh, what i can do uh, okay so qj times ej is nothing but electric force on jth particle okay so this uh, qj is a scalar you can uh, keep moving it anywhere in the cross product doesn't matter scalar can be moved anywhere okay so you can take qj times ej over okay. here and then that becomes the electric force on jth particle so this magnetic force on jth particle is simply v2 by c square times v1 cross fe on the jth particle now take summation over all the particles of body 2 then it simply becomes net electric force okay because this is the only part with subscript j everything else is a constant so you can take out of the summation and this becomes then net electric force so we can say magnetic force is v2 cross v1 cross fe where fe is the net electric force okay isn't that a beautiful result okay i felt very good after deriving this okay so now coming to the uh, my original problem so uh, here it was given instead of charges i had given you charge density sigma and sigma so this is also sigma and this is also sigma and let us say this charge total charge is capital q and let us say this total charge is small q because i had the electrostatics result in terms of capital q and small q so i'll express magnetic force in these terms and then relate capital q and small q in terms of sigma okay so now the res using the result a result a was the solution to the electrostatics problem okay so that the our electric force was q q by 8 epsilon not rl and minus j cap because it was it will be a repulsive force so i just put it minus j cap over here and v1 and v2 both are uh, v i cap okay both so this thing is uh, moving in this direction so velocities of both the uh, bodies you can say the semi cylindrical rigid body and the flat rigid body are v i cap and now magnetic force using this result that i had derived just put in the values of v2 v1 and electric force and just you're done okay so magnetic force is vi cap cross vi cap cross minus j cap uh, because qq by 8 epsilon not rl i can take outside the all cross product so this is just some cons okay and now i can process this uh, cross product so what do, what do i get so qq by 8 epsilon not rl square and uh, a velocity vector is perpendicular to j cap so i cap cross minus j cap Uh, becomes what i cross uh, j is k so i cross minus is minus k okay and i cross minus k then uh, will become uh, j gap okay so this is what you get and now what is capital q capital q is the uh, sigma times curved surface area of cylinder that is sigma into pi rl small q is sigma into base area of uh, rectangle that is 2 rl and now put put it and some simplify this is what you get for the magnetic force okay so this is the result that i wanted to derive i'm happy i got the result okay i hope you found my video useful and you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video 
please do give it a thumbs up and uh, please share this video with your friends as much as possible through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever gram you use for networking with your fellow students who are preparing for je or olympiads and uh, yes most importantly if you are not already subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video for all of you uh, frequently and uh, uh, that's it for this video and i'll see you in the next next video and as always god bless you all thank you so much